The finding that individuals higher in the dark triad prioritize short as well as long-term partners which facilitate a drama-rich environment, as well as Wagner's explanation that narcissists in particular are antagonistic and introduce aggression unnecessarily into environments, makes sense of two things. One, women's testing behaviors, which have been rationalized as their way to gauge positive traits in men. And two, that the dark personality traits have increased to a significant extent in women. In the case of the commonly asserted reasons for women's antagonistic as well as sadistic testing behaviors towards men, this is a subject I've been skeptical on for some time, mainly because the women you can observe engaging in these behaviors possess certain traits indicative of the dark triad. It may very well be that women who engage in the most antagonistic behaviors tend to prioritize relationships facilitating a drama-rich environment and are not gauging men in the manner commonly rationalized by men. I would actually like to see a study done where women who engage in such behaviors are tested for the dark tetrad, and the extent to which they test is compared to how high they are on the dark tetrad. In the meantime, however, in this video, we'll be going over more findings on sadism. Our first study out of two was succinctly titled Sadism and Personality Disorders, which provides a bit of an overview on sadism and, as expected from the title, its association with personality disorders like the dark triad. I've brought up before that the more transparent women's detrimental behaviors towards men become, the more people will try to normalize it through media. Sadia Khan making statements such as, boundaries being for keeping people in, not out, and that cutting people off is a form of, according to her, self-sabotage, as well as women engaging in game-playing, i.e. testing, specifically when they're in love, come to mind here. So the dark triad, again, narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy, is associated with higher rates of sadism, but with psychopathy having the highest association. What came to mind here was the commonality of women's psychopathic behaviors today, including, but not limited to, rampant substance abuse, promiscuity, and of course their already mentioned proclivity towards engaging in an unwarranted aggressive manner towards men, behaviors written off by many men as testing potential partners, and likely also indicative of higher rates of narcissism. Notably, there may be multiple reasons why this behavior comes about. While some women may engage in this behavior to see if the partner provides them with a drummer's environment, perhaps similar to that of reality television, Others may fall into the more commonly asserted category of perhaps being afraid of the man's masculinity or feeling as though they're not good enough, and so they attempt to gain control. This can be the difference between a woman's motivation to prod a man to see if he becomes violent for safety reasons and prodding a man as she desires his retaliation, i.e. masochistic supply. Moreover, as these factors are not mutually exclusive, especially in the case of narcissism, which is compensatory, I do see it as possible that some mix of these behaviors may be at play in certain cases as well. I've also talked about women enjoying bars and clubs, as these are environments frequented by dark triad men, whether as a consequence of intoxication or just their default mode of being. With women's craving for dominance in men, and especially in the event they marry, likely latching on to a man they can easily manipulate as they are lower in the dark triad, and a guaranteed source of long-term resources, however boring, bars and clubs allow them to scratch this itch when needed. Another finding in the study is that sexual sadism is specifically associated with psychopathy. Again, women will prod their long-term partners as to establish a drama's environment as they are higher in the dark tetrad, but they are constantly playing the role of dominator. In attending a bar or club, they gain exposure to men higher in the dark triad or tetrad, who provide them the excitement their husbands don't, or rather, can't. With even professionals being successfully seduced by psychopaths, it comes as no surprise that infidelity is an expected part of attending bars and clubs. And with sexual sadism being something women can actively test for in men, they can flirt their way into knowing who they want their affair partners to be. With a complete lack of dominance in the household, it is in turn outsourced to other men such as psychopaths. While women can be rather reluctant to admit it, it is known that while some women may not even like these men on a personal level, they will still sleep with them. I find it worth noting here that this tends to be asserted as a universal, but this is not the case. While there will be women who fit into this category, 
Today, with women having significantly increased in rates of the dark traits, I find it more likely that the majority today not only find men higher in these traits, such as psychopathy, not only more arousing, but also more desirable as partners as like attracts like. The exception here perhaps being with narcissistic women, as Vakna shed light on, as their dominant nature would serve as a constant threat to their egos. I do wonder, however, if the desire to avoid narcissistic injury outweighs what they find arousing. Perhaps they too would elect to prioritize beta males for the long term while hooking up with more psychopathic men to get the best of both worlds, as many women do. Interestingly as well, as the authors state, Self-centered impulsivity is related to increased self-reported sadistic tendencies in both male and predominantly female community samples, while the cold hardness factor was linked to increased reported sadism in the latter sample only. Two recent behavioral studies show that psychopathy's cold hardness factor is related to increased pleasure after exerting sadistic behavior. In Machiavellianism, a trait of associated with women's hypergony being associated with not becoming attached to supposed partners, a definite form of cold hardness, as well as the dark triad in general being associated with sadism, women's aggressive behavior towards men in relationships furthermore should not come as a surprise. This also goes for women's self-centered impulsivity in accordance with a previous video explaining modern women's psychopathy. Our final study is titled Behavioral Confirmation of Everyday Sadism, which looked at the kinds of tasks sadists would select and how they would perform them. In the first part, between exterminator, assistant to the exterminator, toilet cleaning, or enduring pain from working in a cold environment, the authors explained that if bug killing was chosen, participants were presented with the bug crunching machine, which actually was a modified coffee grinder. Each of three cups adjacent to the machine contained a live pill bug. The bugs' names, Muffin, Ike, and Tootsie, were written on the cups. The participant's job was to drop the bugs into the machine, force down the cover, and grind them up, starting with Muffin. <laughs> the experimenter sat on the other side of the room, apparently checking email. Unbeknownst to the participants, a barrier prevented the bugs from reaching the grinding blades. Thus, it appeared and sounded as though the bugs were being crunched, but no bugs were harmed in the experiment. Interestingly, it was the participants higher in sadism that chose the role of exterminator, followed by being an assistant to the exterminator, cleaning toilets, and then the pain tolerance task. It was also found that the more bugs these sadistic individuals exterminated, the higher they rated their pleasure following the task, and this was also higher than everyone who did not exterminate bugs. Interestingly as well, while sadistic participants did take pleasure in exterminating the bugs, Across all tasks, they simultaneously reported less positive emotions than participants lower in sadism. So, while sadists can obtain pleasure from such acts, what the researchers viewed this to mean was that they may actually possess a lower baseline level of positive emotion, which these acts are used to compensate for. Using the same framework to make sense of women's antagonistic behavior towards men, there is no question that many women get enjoyment out of behaving in this manner. And considering that the more pill bugs the sadistic participants exterminated, the more pleasure they reported, it makes sense that this becomes an ongoing game for women in relationships. Additionally, many women talk about how bored they become, likely indicative of a mix of sensation seeking as well as sadism, and perhaps this incessant prodding serves also to compensate for a lack of positive emotions. In this sense, women could be considered generally empty inside, with men falling in love with their neonist traits, or show, a ghost in the show, if you will. I'll preemptively state here, however, as there surely will be a woman who attempts to use this acknowledgement to say that men are to blame here, as they need to work harder to make women happy, that this is not men's responsibility, and furthermore, that if the woman has to resort to sadism to acquire a positive emotional state, if she is paired with a man lower in the dark triad, he likely won't be able to make her happy anyway, if it is presumed that kindness, as expected with regular people, will result in more positive emotions in the woman. In these cases, given that the woman knows how her psychology functions, while she will never do this, as she likely on some level enjoys not only the resources she can get out of the compassionate man, but also her ability to constantly manipulate as well as elicit a negative emotional response in him, 
if she can't pair with another person higher in the dark triad, she shouldn't pair with anyone at all. Of note as well, and perhaps unsurprisingly, this may in part have to do with boredom, which would be satiated by drama-rich environments and will be the topic of a future video. The researchers go on to bring up the differences in motivation for aggressive behavior when it comes to the dark triad, and furthermore, in my eyes, in considering that the triad has significantly increased in women, why it would be better for many men to not provide them direct access to themselves. As they state, psychopaths have no qualms about hurting others, but their goals are largely instrumental. Moreover, their impulsive orientation limits aggression to low investment, short-term responses. Conversely, narcissists are unlikely to bother with aggression unless their ego is threatened, and Machiavellians are too calculating to risk retaliation or punishment without sufficient benefits. Given these constraints on the dark triad, there may be situations in which only sadists will aggress. One such situation is when the aggression is both unprovoked and costly in terms of time and effort. Only sadists crave cruelty enough to expend time and resources to harm an innocent person when there are no discernible benefits. In considering the previous findings, I think it is fair to say that for sadists, there will always be benefits, even if they come down to the self-centered impulse to make others feel bad in order to acquire a more positive emotional state. That, or perhaps they're just bored. Again, in the context of women's antagonistic behavior towards men, it would seem that both of these factors will surely play a role at some point. In the second part of the study, participants were made to play a computer game to see if they would punish defeated opponents with a blast of white noise, despite the opponent never using this blast on them when they won. Whether participants would work to punish the defeated opponents in having to complete a tedious yet complex word counting task was also tested separately. What was found was that sadism as well as psychopathy and narcissism were associated with blasting opponents. As for the participants who had to work to blast their opponents, only sadism played a role in this to a significant extent. In considering all these findings, two quotes come to mind. The first one is by Dr. Robert B. Fault, which states that, with both the male and the female, love, or sexual attraction, is originally and preeminently sadic. It is positively gratified by the infliction of pain. It is as cruel as hunger. This is the direct, fundamental, and longest established sentiment connected with the sexual impulse. This is very interesting and may very well shed light on the fact that men in particular have been trained out of their more basal instincts when it comes to their interactions with women. This would furthermore make sense of women's unmet cravings for dominance, but given that men tend to be punished for behaving in such a manner, it is not reasonable to expect them to follow such a script. In essence, society has become too safe for women, and women are taking full advantage. The other quote is by Ogi Ogas and Saigadam, as stated in their book, A Billion Wicked Thoughts, which states that anything perceived as dangerous or taboo, including social cultural risks and violations, may simultaneously activate a fight or flight response and enhance sexual arousal. You may recall experiments finding that danger increases arousal, such as one wherein people were made to walk across a seemingly dangerous bridge and interact with someone of the opposite sex. There will surely be multiple reasons women insist on behaving sadistically towards men, and the excitement of whether some form of retaliation will occur will surely be one of them, this especially being the case with sensation seekers. The more men educate themselves on factors such as the dark tetrad and how it manifests in people, the better equipped they will be, especially in the event they are relationship-minded, to know who to discard from their lives. And luckily, women don't hide these behaviors much. For instance, it's not uncommon for women at some point during their first interaction with a man to engage in some form of obvious manipulative act only for the man to call her out on it and her to smirk and laugh. This is a sign which should stick out to the man as foreshadowing for what he should expect in the event he decides to continue interacting with such a woman. As this is during one of their first interactions, it's not like things are going to get better. Women's desire for a sadistic and dramatic environment is a strong one, and as the man ultimately wants peace, it's up to him to quickly and remorselessly discard anyone who is a threat to this.